Hi, and welcome to Bible Study with Friends, where our goal is to help you get more impact from your Bible study. Today, we're going to be in Psalms. We're going to continue in our series. This is part 17 of Psalms. All of our Bible studies are in series, so it's a good idea if you subscribe and hit the little bell icon. That way, you don't fall behind in a series. You'll get a notification every time we post. And if you have any questions as we go along, please write them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer all the questions that are put forward to the best of my ability. And so we're going to start today in Psalm 131, the idea of resting quietly in God. And I would ask the question, how is your rest? And we're going to talk more about that when we come right back. Welcome back to Bible Study with Friends. I'm here with my friend Sherry Mangrum. Sherry and I are going to continue in our study in Psalm. We're going to do Psalm 131. This is the 12th Song of Ascents. These are the songs that Israel would sing as they're going up to Jerusalem. And now the 12th one, they take a breath. We're going to be talking about this idea of quietly resting in God. And this is really a great little psalm. It's only three verses long, but it's a great psalm for today. Because in our world today, we just don't make time for rest. We are very busy being busy. And this psalm is going to talk about resting in God. And we are going to uh, look at that. This is a good example of a Bible study where you see something that's very short, maybe one verse. And you say, that's really not worth a lot of time to spend in that. But today we're going to see about what three verses can speak to our hearts, speak to our souls. We'll talk about that as we get into this. You ready to start? Yes, I'm ready. Me too. We're going to start in... Verse 1, which is a good place to start, this idea of quietness. What do we notice about verse 1 right away, Sherry? We've talked about this many times. What do you notice about verse 1? He's speaking to the Lord. Okay, so this is a prayer. And the prayer goes verse 1 and 2. And then how do we know that verse 3 is not a prayer? It's addressing Israel. Yeah, because... If it was still addressing the Lord, it would say, we should hope in you. Okay? Something mm -hmm. on that line. But it's obvious from, again, the pronouns and who's being addressed, that the first two are prayer. The last verse is a statement the priest is making to the people and to us. And we'll see that as we go. So, read verse 1. O oh Lord. My heart is not proud, nor my eyes haughty, nor do I involve myself in great matters or in things too difficult for me. Okay, what jumps out at you about that? What, what's your impression of that verse, that prayer? He's humbling, humbling himself. Okay, and in a practical matter, when it's talking about quietness, in a practical matter... How do we humble ourselves before the Lord? We be quiet and we come to his feet. Okay, and Without I want to explore, Sherry, what being quiet looks like. Now, when he says, my, my heart is not proud and my eyes are not haughty, then he says something that's very interesting. He says, I'm not proud nor do I involve myself in great matters or in things too difficult for me. Now, that word difficult could also be too magnificent, too awesome for me. It's too difficult for me to understand. We'll put it that way. Now, let's talk about us today. What it's basically saying when it says, I don't involve myself in great matters or things too difficult for me. What is he saying there? I would think that 
he um, was going to the Lord with the things that he did and using the time to spend with God instead of looking for knowledge that he doesn't have yet. Or worrying about knowledge he doesn't have yet. And I, what I take out of that verse is I want to spend time with the Lord. I don't want to worry about things beyond my control and things that I don't know. I need to worry about things that I do know. Right. And I, I don't want to be uh, worried about the big stuff, the, the cosmic. And that, that can be anything from the economy to politics to governmental affairs to to our world the the ecology of our world and you go oh these huge problems and i'm going to say no i'm going to spend time with the lord and i'm not going to worry about things beyond me does that make sense yes yes it's it's as we've been talking about up to this point it's like a reverence in his presence yeah i'm gonna have I'm going to have reverence with humble reverence. Okay. And I'm going to come to the Lord and I'm not going to come to the Lord worrying about stuff that I got no control of. Now, one of the ways I can do that is to know from reading the scriptures, I know that God does understand them and he's in control and I don't have to worry about him because he's got it. Yes. He controls the hearts of man. He controls the world. He controls ecology. He controls, and nothing happens without his permission. Even the bad things he allows to happen for the benefit of those of us who are paying attention. So it's your undivided attention. Right. Now, what do you think he means when he says, my heart is not proud? How would you take that? Um, it's soft towards the Lord. What is soft towards the Lord? His heart. And his, uh, his, his inner being. Okay. So the heart would be my emotions, my motivations, what moves me, my inner self would be this idea of my heart, right? Yes. Now later, he's going to, He's going to switch this. We'll see this in, in verse 2, and we'll talk more about this. But I wanted to bring up this. So he's basically saying, my inner thoughts, my inner motivations is not pride. It's not showing off. It's not being haughty and bragging. I don't go to the Lord to tell him how great I am. <laughs> I go to the Lord to tell him how I need him. Okay, And I don't go to the Lord worrying about stuff that's too big. I, I need to worry about things that I know and things that I can do and not worry about things that I don't know. Yeah. And then we get into verse two. Read verse two for us. Surely I have composed and quieted my soul like a weaned child rests against his mother. My soul is like a weaned child within me. Now, twice in that verse, it uses the word soul, right? Now, how does that compare to the heart? When he says, surely I have composed and quieted my soul. How is that different than composed and quieted my heart? That would be the outside, your flesh body, so to speak. Like you no, I think, I think that would be spirit. I think that would okay. be, I think that would be your, in the scriptures, we see a person is made up of three pieces, the, the spirit, the soul, and the body. Yes. And the difference between spirit and soul, spirit is just, you're alive. You have the spirit of life in you. The soul is that deep relational element that animals don't have. For example, animals are alive. They have a spirit of life, but they don't have a soul in that they don't have a relationship on a spiritual level. And then the body, of course, is the physical. So in this particular case, when he says, I have composed and quieted my soul, is like saying, 
this is even deeper than my heart is my emotions, my motivations, how I'm feeling about things. But my soul is deeper. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yes, I would. And I think when he's talking about composing and quieting his soul, he's saying, I'm coming to the Lord with a deep quietness. This is deep. This is down where I live. This is me. Not just why I do things or how I'd like to do things, but this is deep in my soul. So this idea of, of I have composed and quieted my soul. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 11 says, make it your ambition to, to excel still more and live a quiet life working with your hands. And we talked about this earlier in Greek, in the new Testament, it's written in Greek. The, the word quiet is two pieces of it. There's quiet because of an outside force a teacher saying be quiet or quiet because of what's inside mm. and with christians it's the holy spirit inside and that's this kind of an idea of i'm quiet in my soul because of my relationship with god okay. now composed and quieted my soul like now this is where a, a woman might be able to have some more insights here, but what do you see? I've quieted and composed my soul like a weaned child rests against his mother. My soul is like a weaned child within me. As, as it says, like you said, it says to soul twice in there. And then it also says weaned child twice in there. So um, what do you think weaned child in, in, in the concept of being with God, what do you think weaned child? You're um, satisfied and you're just going to stay in that satisfactory position and, and allow him to let you bask in his glory. Yeah, that's great. That's great. The, the Hebrew word there for weaned is your hunger is completed. It's an interesting concept that it's, it's a, a child that their hunger is completed. What does he do with a breastfeeding child and his, his hunger is completed? What's the picture that you have? Just sitting back, content, maybe even the eyelids starting to droop. You're just so at peace. That's right. It, this idea of resting against his mother is, is I want to come to the Lord with the kind of peace that says, Lord, you've satisfied me. And now I just want to be with you. The way a baby would say, hey, I just want to lay here. I just want to lay against mom's chest and enjoy being with her. That's that yeah. bond that it talks about between a, a mother and a baby. We should have that bond and we can have that bond with God. Where I come to him not worrying about things I can't control, not worrying about how great I am. I come humbly and say, Lord, I just want to focus on you. I don't want to worry about stuff. I just want to, to be with you deep, a deep relationship to the point where I'm so satisfied just being with you that I just want to sit here and rest. Yeah. I just want to sit here and think about you and think about how great our relationship is and that in you i'm completely satisfied i'm weaned that's beautiful so this is the idea of a deep rest and he says it twice like a weaned child yeah. and then he says my, and the end of verse two my soul is like a weaned child within me and that's this idea of a deep peace an inner peace something that is lacking in today's society and, and a lot of times we don't get peace because we don't slow down we don't rest in the lord we, we don't spend five minutes just thinking about how great the lord is i have a, a video called the five minute prayer challenge 
And in that, I challenge people to pray for five minutes and not ask God for anything. And to do yes. that, you have to pray about God. <laughs> you have to pray about how great he is, how fabulous he's blessed you. And then don't ask him for more blessing. Just praise him and worship him for five minutes. And that's harder than it seems. I think at the end of this video, I'll put a link to the prayer challenge for you to think about. But that's this idea of being so deeply at rest in the presence of God. Is that a challenge for us? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> I want to worry about my health. I want to worry about my friends. I want to worry about my family. I want to worry about my job. I want to worry about all kinds of stuff. And I come to the Lord. And when I come to the Lord worried, all I have is a big list of wants. And, and that even goes for women like, oh, I've got laundry. And I, I was oh, going yeah, to sure. do the bed sheets. Sure, and my chores. You know. Yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got a list of things to do. And very often we'll let that list of things to do stop us from resting in the Lord and stop us from going and just being with the Lord like a weaned baby. These pictures of a baby sleep on mommy's breast. That's what a wonderful picture that is of us spending time with the Lord. And I can go to the Lord and say, Lord, my mind is going crazy. I want to be deep with you. I want to be at rest because he says it in early part of verse two, he says, surely I have composed and quieted my soul. This isn't something that God forces us to do. We have to sit down and think about, I want to compose myself. I want to quiet myself. I don't want to worry about stuff. I just want to spend some time with a loving, nurturing God. The busyness mm -hmm. the, and the frenetic actions and thoughts. We need to quiet that. Yes. One of the reasons why uh, time in the scriptures in the morning, when you're going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to have a little Bible study in the morning. What's that called? We call it devotional time. Okay. It's also called having a quiet time. Say, so how's your quiet time? My quiet time is a time where, yes, I'll be in the word. And yes, I'll challenge myself with the word, but it's also a time or I can just be with God. So a certain section of my quiet time is literally quiet before the Lord. And boy, that's the time when he can really speak to us. Now look at the last verse. This is now a statement to Israel and to us, covenant people. It's, oh, Israel, hope in yeah. the Lord. That's that confidence. The word hope means confidence. O oh, Israel, have confidence in the Lord from this time forth and forever. Now, what does that have to do with the other two verses? Having confidence in the Lord from this time forever? Having well, a relationship that's got a confidence? What has that got to do with the two verses we've been talking about? If you about? don't spend the quiet time with them, you're not going to be able to build up a friendship. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I, my hope in the Lord, my confidence in the Lord is weakened when I don't spend quality time with him, when I'm not quietly resting with him. So I can ask some, some hard questions here. We can ask some hard questions in our lives. Is, is, do I spend time simply resting with God? Do I spend time without going to sleep? Used to be, man, if I sat down for five minutes quietly and just started to pray, I'd go to sleep because I was so tired. We have to rest in the Lord without sleeping on him, okay? Um, and so I go to sleep at night praying to him and I fall asleep praying to him, so. Well, that's, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. But it shouldn't be a habit that every time we pray, we start to fall asleep. Amen. We should be able to pray resting in God and praying really mentally 
challenge, mentally active. Our heart is active and our deep soul is active because we're resting in a relationship with the Lord that gives us a confidence in him going on for the rest of our lives. What a great psalm. Three verses. What a challenge to us. Any any comments? Sherry? Um, none except for after we go out, I will go and spend some quiet time with the Lord. Now, now don't get me wrong. You, you don't have to go the whole time and never ask the Lord for anything. But before we start asking God for something, asking him to intercede in our life, asking him for blessings or mercy, you know, Sherry and I, we've prayed for some health issues. But before we can really ask the Lord and really beg the Lord, we need to be quiet before him. Let him speak to us. If Sherry and I had a conversation and all I did was talk, and I never let her talk. Is that a conversation? No, it's a lecture. Yes. <laughs> when we have a conversation with God, we have to leave some resting moments for God to speak to us. As a matter of fact, I think I'll take that five-minute challenge on, and then I will rest in him for a little while. It's, a, it's an interesting challenge. I've done it many times, and it's, it really is great because you catch yourself. Say, thank you, Lord, for blessing me with this. Now, could you do, oh, no, I'm not going to ask you for anything. I'm here to, to worship you. What a great God you are. What you have done in the past is amazing. What you've done for me is amazing. Without asking him for the do the next thing. It's an interesting prayer challenge. Set a timer, five minutes. And uh, listen, watch for that link at the end of this video. The question, are you resting in God, is a great challenge, and I would challenge you to answer that question. What's the quality of my rest with God? Can I simply rest in my relationship with Him? In this video, we've been talking about resting in the Lord and resting in our time of being with the Lord. Just a few minutes ago, we talked about this idea of praying just to be with the Lord. And the, the five-minute prayer challenge of praying for five minutes without asking God for anything, just praying to be with him. And this is a prayer of worship and that sort of thing. And listen, if you'd like a link to that video, it's right here. And just click on it and go to that and you'll be blessed with a perhaps a new idea of how to pray. God bless you, and we'll see you in the next Bible Study with Friends.